The throne of the Most Merciful shook from the death of Sa'ad bin Mu'ad. He addressed them as follows, O sons of Ashhal, how do you know me? They said, you are our master, our most far-sighted and reliable man. In that case, I'm telling you that I will not speak with any of you unless you believe in Allah and his messenger like me. The speech of Sa'ad affected his clan and all of the men and women of sons of Ashhal became Muslims on the same day before the evening. When the battle of Badr was about to take place, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad stood up and said, O Prophet of Allah, we swore a solemn oath and gave you the allegiance. So go ahead with whatever you want and we shall stand by your side. We will not avoid fighting the enemy. We will not lag behind during the battle. Lead us with the blessing of Allah. I hope that Allah will make us do what will make you proud of us. So go on with whatever is in your mind. Allah bless you. When a silken cloth was given as a present to the Prophet وسلم, his companions started touching it and admiring its softness. The Prophet said, are you admiring its softness? The handkerchiefs of Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh in paradise are better and softer than it. Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh is one of the greatest companions of the Prophet peace be upon him. He is one of the chiefs of Ansar, the helpers in Medina. He is someone that stood by Prophet Muhammad. And he is someone that when people had hesitation, he was the one that would get them back to their state of confidence, that would remind them of their service of the Lord of the throne, of the most merciful. He would remind them of the pledge that they took to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him explains to us that the throne of Allah did not shake because the throne could not handle the death of Sa'ad or because of fear or anything of that sort. But the throne shook from the joy of the Lord of the returning of the soul of Sa'ad. Mus'ab ibn Umayr whom Muhammad peace be upon him has sent to al Madina to call people to commit themselves to Islam and monotheism, Mus'ab's first settled in the house of As'ad bin Zurara, who was Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad's cousin. Mus'ab used his house as his center of activity and increased the number of the Muslims in Medina. Sa'ad, who was not a Muslim then, was disturbed by it, but he could not intervene because his cousin, his maternal aunt's son, was involved in the issue. He didn't find it appropriate for his rank and character to intervene in something happening in the house of one of his relatives. Finally, he talked to Usaid bin Khudair, who was one of the notables of sons of Ashhal, and asked him to do something to end the activities of Mus'ab. However, Usaid, who went to talk to Mus'ab in a threatening way, became a Muslim after listening to him. Then he said to Mus'ab, I will send you somebody. If he follows you, every one of his people will follow him and accept Islam. Usaid returned to Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad as a Muslim. Sa'ad noticed the change in him and asked, Usaid, what did you do? I talked to them and I did not see anything bad about them. This infuriated Sa'ad. He went to the place where As'ad and Mus'ab were directly. Mus'ab made Sa'ad sit. He told Sa'ad about Islam and recited the Quran to him. As Sa'ad listened to the Quran, his heart softened and he became a Muslim. Sa'ad stood up and had a bath. Then he uttered the kalima and performed a prayer of two rak'ahs. Then he called Usaid bin Khudair, who had become a Muslim before him and summoned his clan. When Sa'ad saw that sons of Ashhal gathered, he addressed them as follows, O sons of Ashhal, how do you know me? They said, you are our master, our most far-sighted and reliable man. In that case, I'm telling you that I will not speak with any of you, men and women, 
unless you believe in Allah and his messenger like me. This speech of Sa'ad affected his clan and all of the men and women of sons of Ashhal became Muslims on the same day before the evening. A new sun shone on Medina as soon as Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad committed himself to Islam. Sa'ad committed himself to Islam and withstood the hardships that ensued with much heroism and greatness. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, immigrated to Al-Madina, the houses of Bani Al-Ashhal, Sa'ad's tribe, welcomed the Muhajirun, and their money was utterly at their disposal without arrogance, misuse, or limitation. When the Battle of Badr was about to take place, the Prophet, peace be upon him, gathered his companions, both Ansar and Muhajirun, to consult them on the preparations for war. His amiable face turned towards the Ansar and he addressed them saying, I want to know your opinion about what should be done concerning the imminent battle. Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad stood up and said, O Prophet of Allah, we firmly believe in you and we witness that what descends on you is the truth. We swore a solemn oath and gave you the allegiance. So go ahead with whatever you want and we shall stand by your side. We swear by Allah who has sent you with the truth that if you reach the sea and cross it, we will cross it hand in hand with you. No man will lag or stay behind. We are absolutely ready to go to war against our enemy tomorrow. We will not avoid fighting the enemy. We will not lag behind during the battle. Lead us with the blessing of Allah. I hope that Allah will make us do what will make you proud of us. So go on with whatever is in your mind. Allah bless you. O Messenger of Allah, allow us to build a bower for you. You sit there and we will fight the enemy. If Allah makes us victorious, it will be very good. That is what we want. And if we are defeated, you can get on your mount and return to Medina. Sa'ad made the Prophet's face brighten with satisfaction and happiness as he addressed the Muslims and said, Rejoice, for Allah has promised me one of the two parties of the enemy, either the army or the caravan. By Allah, I can almost see with my own eyes where each one of the enemy will be taken out. In the battle of Uhud, the Muslims lost control and dispersed as they were taken by surprise by the army of disbelievers. Everything was hectic. Yet Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad stood there as if pinned to the ground next to the Prophet peace be upon him. He defended him courageously as a noble warrior should do. In the fifth year of the migration, the polytheists of Quraysh besieged Medina. The Muslims were trying to defend themselves with a big trench they had dug by working really hard and undergoing a lot of trouble. During the battle, a polytheist called Ibn al-Araqa was looking at Sa'ad all the time by holding his bow. Finally, he shot an arrow at Sa'ad and tore one of his veins and his arm. When Sa'ad bin Mu'ad realized that his wound was severe, he opened his hands and prayed as follows. O Lord, if the war between Quraysh and us is to continue, allow me to live. I do not like anything as much as I like fighting those men who deny your prophet. If the war between us is to end, elevate me to your rank. O Lord, do not remove my soul before showing me the end of the sons of Qurayza. The sons of Qurayza had signed a treaty with the Muslims, but they violated this treaty during the battle of Khandaq by cooperating with the polytheists. Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad was in good terms with the sons of Qurayza, Jews before Islam. Therefore, the Jews proposed that Sa'ad be the judge to decree about their violation of the treaty. The Messenger of Allah accepted Sa'ad to act as a judge. Sa'ad got out of his bed, though he was ill and wounded, and set off to fulfill a great duty. When he approached Qurayza, the Messenger of Allah said, Your master is coming. Stand up and settle him. Then he turned to Sa'ad and said, decree about them. Sa'ad decreed that their warriors should be taken out and their children, women, 
would be taken as captives and their wealth to be distributed to the Muslims. This decree existed in the Torah too. The Prophet became pleased with this decree and said, You have given the same decree as Allah and His Messenger would give. Sa'ad's wounds became worse every day. One day the Prophet, peace be upon him, visited Sa'ad and found him on the verge of death. So he put his head on his blessed lap and called upon Allah. O oh Allah, our Lord, Sa'ad has driven hard in the way of Allah. He believed in your Prophet and did his very best. So please do accept his soul with goodly acceptance. The words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, fell like coolness and safety on the departing noble soul. He strove to open his eyes, hoping that the last face he saw would be the Prophet's face and said, Peace be upon you, O Prophet. I do witness that you are indeed the Messenger of Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, took a farewell look of Sa'ad's face and said, Rejoice, Abu Amr. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I was one of those who dug Sa'ad's grave. And each time we dug out a layer of sand, we smelled musk. This went on until we reached his burial. Sa'ad's death was a tragic loss for the Muslims. Their only consolation was when they heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, say, The throne of the most beneficent shook when Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad died.